So when you're doing landscape work and you're trying to keep in mind that safety in the landscape is a high priority, the highest priority, some of the things you should look for are co-dominant stems. The majority of times the trees fail, like in the pictures I showed you, co-dominant stems have some involvement. You should also look for included bark, cracks and splits, multiple attachments, cross branching, girling roots, wounds, decay, cavities, fungal fruiting bodies, things that look like mushrooms on the tree, bleeding, looser cracked bark, nesting holes, uh, I don't want you to think that I'm prejudiced. I love squirrels and birds and, and nature. But when you see a nesting hole, that can be an indication that there's rotten wood inside the tree. Because those animals aren't stupid. They put their burrows where the wood's soft. The woodpeckers like to peck into the soft wood because they like to eat insects. And insects are in the soft wood. So when you see nesting holes, that could be an indication of decay inside the, inside the wood. Uh, dead wood, borers, termites, ants, trees leaning, over pruned palms, and if the tree has failed previously, it's got a higher likelihood of failing in the future. So that's a fungal fruiting body. You've all seen bracket mushrooms on trees. The main body of a fungus that invades a tree are filament-like structures that get into the tree's vascular system. They get into the xylem and into the phloem, and they clog the xylem and the phloem. Every three months, I go to a cardiologist, and he checks my blood to make sure that my vessels are all clear, and I take Lipitor every morning to keep them clear. There is no such thing as Lipitor <laughs> for trees, at least not yet. But in the way that fungal organisms kill trees is they block the vascular system, just like Human beings get things that block our vascular system and cause heart attacks and strokes. By the time you see the fruiting bodies, the bracket mushroom-like structures, it means that those filaments that clog up the vascular tissue have lived there long enough that they're, repro whoops, that they're reproducing. And it's usually too late by the time you see these structures to save the tree. The tree may linger for years, but the whole inside of it's decaying. Sometimes it can decay to the point where you don't know it because the outside of the tree doesn't show any symptoms, but the whole thing is decayed and you get a little bit of a windstorm and the tree just topples over. That was what happened to that tree up in um, um, Titusville. It was a magnolia tree that had basal decay. I talked to one of the expert witnesses in that case and uh, the property owner was totally unaware of it. But. Um, it caused the tree to flip just like this one did. Would you park your pickup truck <laughs> in that spot? I don't care how hot the sun is. This tree has failed previously. There's splits right here indicating where branch co-dominant leaders have fallen. There's dieback. There's cross branches. And there's lots of places to park. I wouldn't park my truck there. Previous failure is a strong indication of the high probability of future failure. Sometimes when trees do fail and they're being cut up and hauled away, you can see where they had been decayed in the middle, and they call that columns of decay. If you are hired to do specific hazard tree assessment, there are ways that arborists assess that. One way is to knock on the tree, and if you hear hollow, it could be decay. Another way is to have a long drill bit and drill through the tree and feel how much resistance there is. There's an instrument called a resistograph, which is a, a drill with a long bit that has a graph on it that shows how much resistance there is. And arborists who do this kind of work as a specialization often have specialized equipment. But sometimes this is one of the hardest kinds of defects to see because people just don't notice it because it's interior. So potential indicators of decay include cracks, seams, bulges, and wounds. If you don't know if there's decay in the middle, if you see a crack, you see a seam, you see a bulge, you see a wound, that can be an indication that maybe the tree should be inspected. Uh, useful tools include excavation devices, anything from a shovel up to a pneumatic air excavation device, binoculars. I have a graduate student right now who's uh, studying disorders on palms, and he's always carrying binoculars. 
He's down in Dade County, and everybody thinks he's a bird watcher. <laughs> and he's not a bird watcher. He's looking, looking to see if there's defects up in the tops of trees up high. Uh, listening devices can be used to listen. Uh, in the old days, when arborists were called tree surgeons, sometimes they actually carried stethoscopes, and they would listen to the tree. Because some of those organisms that cause decay in trees, like that beetle that Emily was talking about, the emerald ash beetle, they're so noisy that you can hear them. They, they actually sound like, a, it's like a it's called stridulation by entomologists. You may want to write that word down for your, for, stridulation. Um, it's, yeah, for a good Scrabble game, you could really win on that one. But entomologists have, uh, most of the technology for that has been developed for the termite industry. But tree entomologists are using that same kind of listening, it's like a sonar device in a submarine. A good sonar operator can listen to the sonar and tell whether the sound it's hearing a mile away is a whale or an enemy submarine. And if it's a whale, they can tell what species it is and how old it is. And whether it's a male or a female, because they got experience listening to those noises. Uh, so there are listening devices that have been developed for the termite industry that have been borrowed by the tree care industry to listen to see who's inside the tree. Increment borers are hand drills that can show the density of wood after you pull the increment out. Electric drills and the resistograph is an electric drill with a graph built in.